great question. I think within the African continent, we can hardly see our political leaders being visionary leaders. They just think about today, and, and, and they haven't come out with moving people forward. Unfortunately for us, even in Ghana, we don't have a national vision that is driving us as a nation. If I should ask any politician, and I've done that in, in most of my leadership training, mm -hmm. ask any MP, ask any politician, ask any minister of government, whether past government or previous government, ask the staff of the Jubilee House, in 15 years from now, what kind of Ghana do we envisage to have? Mm -hmm. Believe me, our MPs have no clue. Our politicians don't have an idea. Not even the Jubilee House have an idea of what kind of Ghana in 15 years from now we desire to have. And so if we can paint that picture that in 15 years this is the kind of country we want to build, the taxi driver who, who picks a visitor from the airport will be able to communicate that listen, 10 years from now, this is the kind of Ghana we want to have. And therefore, we'll be able to share some ideas. All the chancellors in the various universities can design programs that will prepare students for the next 10 years because they all have an idea of the kind of country we want to build. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King made a statement. He said, I have a dream, and my dream is firmly rooted in the American dream. Mm -hmm. Now, guess it. He said his dream is connected to the American dream. Until we have a national vision, and which is national dream or national plan to drive the nation, every individual's dream cannot be connected to a national dream. Your dream, your organization dream, industries, education, individuals, churches, every system and society can have a dream connected to the national dream. So until there is a national dream to chart a course for a country, there will always be chaos and confusion, and we will only be moving in circles. No wonder governments of the governments in this country will always tell you they are laying the foundation. When they come during their time, the first term, so we have laid the foundation and we are going to build on it. Rollins government laid the foundation during his first term, mm -hmm. and he said he was building on it. When Kufo government came, he said he laid the foundation during the first term, he was building on it. Atta Mills came, he said he was leading the foundation and building on it. Mahama said he has now laid the foundation he wants to build. Why are governments after government laying the foundation? Because there is no vision that is driving the nation. And so everybody is trying to lay a foundation. And for 20 something years, we have laid the foundation and have never put any superstructure on it. Interesting. But why do you think, well, well, even before I go into why you think, do you think that the National Development Plan and Commission will provide, will provide us that vision, that dream, that national dream that you think could be the bedrock of, of, of growth for the country? You see, the National Development Commission should be the vehicle for a national vision to be developed. But this is what I keep on sharing with policymakers. The National Commission vision, the National Commission plan can be the vehicle. What they can possibly do is bring all major political parties together because all political parties are manifestos. And basically, the manifestos are not too different from each other. Okay, <clears throat> when you look at the major broad areas. So bring all the political parties together, bring academia, industry players, religious leaders, all stakeholders form what I call vision consultative assembly. And then let there be a, an input. From that vision consultative assembly, we will be able to develop the national vision that will cover <coughs> maybe about 10 major areas of the society, you know, in terms of economy, education, agriculture, and what have you. And then that will paint a picture of the next 15 or 20 years or 30 years where we want Ghana to be. Then we will give you the, you know, the legal framework. Okay, but because it, once it goes to parliament, people will not oppose it. Why? Because they were part of the formation of the national you know, uh, uh, vision. So that can be done, but that should be the process. You engage all political parties, industry players, academia, all major groups, TUC, major organizations. They should all come together to develop the national vision that will chart the course. Then parliament will give it the necessary legal framework. Then any party that takes office can decide to 
find a particular segment of the vision, plug themselves in, and then rule the plan and develop it. Well, Bishop, is, is that what the uh, development planning commission is doing? Well, that is what they are doing. But see, they haven't involved everybody. Mm. So it is not our national vision. It is only connected to a political party. And that is our challenge. It should move from a political party agenda to a national agenda. And all that any government or president can do is to lead the way and just get everybody on board. You see, any president can leave. I pray that we can. We need to have a president that, that can leave this national legacy. Just mobilize the people, bring them on board, and let's form a national vision that will drive our country. You can't develop a vision when you decide to get a group of people outside the process of develop, the development and the crafting of the vision. I see. Now, be a part of the conversation 0302231144 or 0302231145. The phone lines are open now 0302231144. 0302231145. If you want to send us a message to the WhatsApp number is 0262518268. We are discussing uh, the Kwame Nkrumah legacy and uh, leadership today. You know, 58 years of independence for Ghana, 53 years after that iconic uh, speech at the AU in Addis Ababa. Uh, Ethiopia in 1963 uh, to be specific. Uh, let us know your thoughts about Founders Day today. And uh, you're still live on the Morning Star. We are live in Accra on Star 103.5 FM. Uh, in Kumasi Ultimate 106.9. In Takra the Empire 102.7. And across the world, we are live on Star FM Online.com. My name is Kimini Amano. My guest this morning. On uh, the subject is Bishop Samuel Mensah. He's the president of the Full Gospel Church International. For the purpose of this conversation, we'll describe him as a leadership development consultant. We are discussing a few principles from his book. Reverend, what's the title of your book again? Uh, it's Vision: The Full World That Drives. Yeah, yes. and and it, 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 it's a, a bit of the book is based on Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and his iconic speech. Now, uh, Bishop has told us that he's identified 21 visionary leadership principles that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah applied in just one speech. It's no wonder that speech is very iconic. We've uh, touched on about 18 of them already. We have three more to go. But Reverend, uh, before we go to 19, uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah spoke a lot about, you know, getting rid of the borders, having the common common commonality uh, in in whatever we do, you know, the, the, the single currency, having a common front mm -hmm. and all that. But in, even today, here in Ghana, we have some people uh, somewhere around the voter region getting into uh, the, 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 the law who say that they want to uh, see from the rest of us. They, they don't want to be part of that. In Nigeria, Biafra wants to be alone. Biafra wants to be independent from the rest of Nigeria. We see pockets of that across the region. Why is it difficult that 53 years, five decades and three, after that speech that gave us the vision, mm. and the need for us to be a single front as a continent, we still have pockets of these uh, issues and we have, we have not been able to have that single front. Why? I think when a group of people feel